Jack Horkheimer, Stargazer, tells you all about the night sky and the biggest show of all, the universe. And now, this week's episode. Get ready for next week's total eclipse of the moon. You won't see another one for four years. Hey there, Stargazers. I'm Dean Regis from the Cincinnati Observatory, and I'll be your guest host this month on Stargazer. On Tuesday morning, December 21st, the full moon will pass through the shadow of the Earth and produce a total eclipse of the moon. The next total lunar eclipse that we can see from all of North America won't happen until tax day, April 15th, 2014. This lunar eclipse will be on the same day as this year's winter solstice. During totality, the moon will be above Orion the hunter and surrounded by the brightest stars of the winter. Let me show you. Okay, let's imagine that we're out in space looking at our moon, earth, and sun. Now moonlight is really light from the sun reflected off the moon and back to our earth. One half of the moon is lit up by the sun at all times, although the only time we see the half of the moon that is completely lit up is when we have a full moon, which occurs every month whenever the moon is directly opposite the sun, as seen from Earth. Now usually when we have a full moon, the moon is either above or below the plane of our Earth's orbit and passes above or below the shadow. Last month, the moon passed above the Earth's shadow and pass directly between the Earth's shadow and the Pleiades, but you couldn't see either of them. You'll just have to take my word for it. Now occasionally the full moon will glide directly into the plane of our Earth's orbit and will pass directly through our Earth's shadow, which will block most of the sun's light from reaching it. In other words, our Earth's shadow will eclipse the light of the sun, which is why we call such an event an eclipse. But during a total lunar eclipse, the moon never completely disappears and always turns some unpredictable shade of reddish orange. And that's because the red rays of sunlight are bent by our Earth's atmosphere into our Earth's shadow, filling it with a faint reddish orange light. So during a total lunar eclipse, the reddish orange moon color you see is actually red light from all the sunrises and sunsets around the world being refracted, that is bent, into our Earth's shadow, and onto the moon, and then reflected back to the Earth again. Now, if we look closely at our Earth's shadow cone, we would see that there are two distinct parts to it, a pale outer shadow called the penumbra, and a smaller inner dark shadow called the umbra. When the moon is in the penumbra, the eclipse effect is not very noticeable. So I suggest you start watching the moon when it begins to enter the umbra at 1.32 a.m. Eastern time, or your local equivalent. As time passes, the umbra, our Earth's circular shadow, will slowly creep across the moon and gradually darken it and cause it to change color. But what color the moon will turn, no one can predict. And that's what makes it so much fun. Will it turn bright orange or blood red? Only the shadow knows. The moon will be within the umbra and totally eclipsed for an hour and 13 minutes from 2.40 a.m. until 3.53 a.m. Eastern Time. Then from 3.53 a.m. to 6.01 a.m., the moon will slowly slide out of the umbra and then the penumbra and will return to nearly full moon brilliance. Remember that while it's still in the penumbra, there will be very little difference from a regular full moon. But this year, as a bonus, during totality, you'll see the moon in the middle of the winter hexagon. The closest bright star to the red moon will be the red star Betelgeuse in Orion. Not much further away, you'll find the red star Aldebaran, the menacing eye of Taurus the Bull, the constellation that is hosting this lunar eclipse. Up to the right of the moon is Capella in Auriga the Charioteer, and nearly overhead is the pair of stars named for the twins of Gemini, Castor and Pollux. Off to the left of the moon is Procyon. At the darkest part of the eclipse, you might notice that the moon is in the middle of the Milky Way, but there's no guarantee you'll see it. Then, well down to the left of the moon will be the brightest star in the night sky, the dog star Sirius. And closing the winter hexagon, Rigel in Orion. So pray for clear skies Tuesday morning, the 21st, when the moon turns red. Keep looking up and say hi to the stars tonight. Thank <laughs> you.